but it's called the Devil's Half Acre. So back during you know, uh, uh, pre-Civil uh, War, this was a slave dungeon, right? And the research shows that Richmond, Virginia was only second to New Orleans in terms of being a trafficking Africans, right? So the way that I articulated is like, every black person in the country got some family that came through Richmond, Virginia at some point, right? Uh, this dungeon was, uh, this is not all of it. The entire Shackle Bottom was a market, right? Mm -hmm. So while some people sold people, other people sold shackles. Other people sold clothing. Other people were the uh, patty rollers or the, the bounty hunters, you know what I mean? And they all had businesses in Shackle Bottom, right? Like, those buildings still stand. Let Tyrone give you a little history of the space, uh, but just you know, level set. Uh, this land uh, was acquired in uh, September 2022. Um, as an organizer, I've always, as, as a food justice organizer and a farmer, one of the biggest struggles that I experienced has been land tenure, right? And working as an urban farmer in particular like being on land and then being moved off of that land either because of uh shady land owners or development pressures like that stuff has been a consistent challenge for us as you know doing this work so in uh 2020 i met an organization called the agrarian trust and they engaged us in the conversation about how they were trying to remove land from the real estate market and preserve it specifically for ag use. I was like, oh, okay, cool, that's what's up. And just made a mental note, you know what I mean? Um, COVID hit, and I was like, yo, let's have a conversation. Like, let's really, if y'all really about that life, 
let's see if we can make a connection. And so um, at the same time I was having that conversation, another woman named Callie Walker in Amelia County was having a conversation with the agrarian trust. Amelia? Callie Walker is a white woman. Uh, her, she inherited 80 acres of land from her father. She didn't have any kids. And she wanted to make sure that the land went to black money. Jada. So our conversation careened into each other, whereas I was looking for land in the urban space and she was trying to donate land in the rural space. The Agrarian Trust provided assistance, right? Legal help as well as financial and help transfer that land from Kelly Walker into the Central Virginia Agrarian Commons. Deed and title Oasis Community Farm, we uh, set it up explicitly as an incubator farm. Right? So uh, what we've been doing is leasing out quarter acre plots to uh, beginning farmers with the ideation that folks will grow out of this space and then be able to go to the Amelia property and get a larger parcel of property where they can take root and really scale up their, their, their operation. But right now, we have Petersburg, you know what I mean? And so like, um, I brought, there's three of my uh, folks that are on this uh, property. So Tyrone is like the army. Um, I don't know Tyrone for damn near 10 years. Yeah, almost 10 years. And so I met Tyrone, I used to work for Virginia State University uh, and we took a rec center that we, and we transformed it into an indoor farm back in 2014. And I met Tyrone, he was doing front yard, backyard gardens, working with kids in that space. And then we just- Peace everyone. Out. Welcome to the Oasis, the Petersburg Oasis Community Farm. I'll start by telling y'all why we decided to name it that. Uh, so you're standing in Petersburg, Virginia. Not sure how familiar you are with the city of Petersburg, but uh, in the state of Virginia, uh, for a long time, we've been ranked number one for heart disease, for deaths from heart disease, type two diabetes, um, childhood food insecurity cost 30 cents per child to feed our children here and we're still struggling with that and all that comes back to um, this thing that we call the food desert right Petersburg is considered a food desert so as an educator I'm a teacher of 20 plus years I taught everything from kindergarten to being a principal I taught at every school here in this city uh, I got kids who I taught in seventh grade who not only help build this farm up but also bring their kids here to enjoy this farm um, so I just give you a little bit of that background about the city so that you understand the impact that this space is having on our community, right? Just the fact that it exists. The fact that we have what we call an oasis within a so-called food desert, all right? And we intentionally named it that because we wanted to remind the community, like, yeah, we may be living within a challenge of this, this, this so-called food desert, but we can grow our own oasis, right? We can do it together. We can do it by working with each other and working with our environment. And we've been doing just that. So um, I met Deron by doing a documentary. So I was trying to show the community, uh, I initially turned my front yard into a community garden with a group of kids, right? That was my attack at living in a food desert, right? Let's start a community garden. I don't have any land, so let's do my front yard, right? So then I started trying to document other people who were doing it. And of course, you know, you can't, you're going to catch Deron Chavis, right? You're going to catch Ron Philly, you're going to catch Ron Chavis. You Google it, YouTube it, Ted Talk it, you're going to run into the, one of these brothers, right? So I go, I noticed that he was up the street, right at Halifax and Cardiff Street, which is about 10 minutes from here. He turned a gym where James Brown once performed into an indoor agricultural center. To me, that was super creative. When I looked at his videos, he was hip hop to me, like he was familiar to me. He was like the kids that I was teaching. He was like my brother, he was like my dad. He looked like me, felt like me. So I thought that was important. So I started taking his classes. He left that part out. I was a student at his, still am a student at his. You know what I'm saying? Disinformed me now. Now I'm studying his Instagram. Like, oh, my, 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 solar panels. But I say that to say, just having that model, folks, right? Not just having a role model, but having a real model. So when he was saying that this is not just serious and, you know, we're doing this, practically doing this, it's happening. And for us to be able to see how that contributes to the inspiration of the community, Right when kids who were walking to school maybe four or well, now walking to school maybe a year ago, they walked past this space and it was just grass. Then they walked back, you know, maybe six months later and they heard a rooster. Mm. They saw a chicken coop. You know what I'm talking about? And that's a nice chicken coop. You know, you, know, you know what I mean? Like so many chicken coops look better than some of the homes that are sitting here in Petersburg. Just to be honest. Um, my farm is Healing Hope Urban Gardens. Um, I started Healing Hope officially in 2021, um, but I have always wanted to get into agriculture 
Um, I've been growing food um, for over 10 years. Um, my background, my family, my great grandmother grew up on a farm in Georgia. I'm originally from Georgia. Um, remember as a young child, being out there with her, learning, getting that discipline. Um, and once I got out of the army, um, one thing about it that really kind of said to me, this is what you really need to do is, um, I, I, I'm an Iraq war veteran. I was there in 2003 during the initial ground war and then two more times after that. And I've traveled the world. I've seen poverty, I've seen death, um, I've seen despair. But what I also saw, which was interesting to me is that even for some of the poorest neighborhoods and little villages that I saw that I was in as a soldier, one thing I did not see is I did not see people starving. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see them starving because they grew their own food. Mm -hmm. They provided for their communities mm -hmm. and for each other as neighbors, um, as family. Um, so, uh, long story short, um, my background is in nutrition, um, dietetics. Um, everything about me is food, I love food. Uh, I love growing it. I love the wellness and nutritional aspect of it. Um, I also love the food safety part of it because that is very important, okay? Um, by day, I am a food safety professional um, for the state. Um, and so for me, as a farmer out here, I practice what I also preach and I, and I train and I teach my operators to practice in the restaurants, right? Um, because it's very important. Oasis Community Farm also has a Petersburg Oasis Youth Farm where we incorporate the kids into where we introduce them to agriculture, we introduce them to STEAM, so science, technology, engineering. It's not just agriculture, we all, I mean, sorry, not just art, we also include agriculture, and then our M is not just math, it's mindfulness. So they come here and they meditate, we take mindfulness walks through the woods, we do sun salutations, we talk about the orientation of the sun, right? They're usually here around the same time, so now that, you know, they'll know where the east is, because that's when we did our sun salutation, and then we'll talk about the impact that has on the farm, right? So the, to, to sum it up, sowing that seed of faith, right? Just putting it out there, taking the job at $15 an hour, not knowing where it was going to lead me to, right? Jumping in, jumping into a relationship with somebody that you, like, that was bigger, it still is bigger than life to you. That can be intimidating, right? What man, you wanna work with me, man? You wanna work with Petersburg, bro, right? But what that does is it reminds you that there's not much separation, that's just an illusion. There's not much difference, and it, more importantly, that we're all in this together, right? So this community oasis, it's not just an oasis, I'm sorry, not just an oasis within this food desert. We wanted to remind people that this is the community. It's an asset for the community. So we, that's why I shook all your hands and welcomed you here. The energy that you are adding to this space will resonate in this space for eternity. That's just it. Anybody who comes here, our kids that come and visit this space will absorb your energy that you're planting in it right now with your feet, with your ideas, and when you decide to start touching stuff here. And I think that's super important to know and to be mindful of. And I tell the kids the same thing. The seeds that you sow here and the work you put in here, our visitors, our guests, are going to absorb that too. So this is a true reflection of Petersburg. If you never heard of Petersburg before, right, even if you go do some research, I want this to be the impression that's made on you for Petersburg, right? This is not the past of Petersburg. This is the future of Petersburg, and we're experiencing it right now. So I appreciate y'all for adding to this space.
that window. They observed for a little while. I just had a girl do it the other day. She's like, I'm not going in that chair. I said, that's fine, baby. She stood at the window. She watched them. I'm over here talking about the rabbits. I look over. Little girl is in for the chickens. She, know, you know, she was able to observe them and interact with them you know, visually. And that let her know, like, okay, it's cool. You know, they're okay. Plus, all my friends are in here. coming first of all it's really cool to see it's probably the biggest group i've ever had uh, out here so forgive me if i gotta project a little more when i'm talking just let me know be enough i mean we are in mechanicsville virginia in mechanicsville virginia we're about five miles outside of richmond four or five miles out of richmond my name is mark davis as Ron said i'm the founder of um hello hi good to see you for sure. <laughs> um i'm a i'm the founder of real roots food systems um, and I've had Real Roots for about four years, founded in 2019. And this is the main site that we operate from. Although we have three sites around the city, one, one in the city, uh, in the east end of Richmond, 
one right here, main site located, and then a pretty robust compost operation that uh, that I operate with the help of uh, me. Um, a little bit about me, uh, just so that y'all know where I'm, I guess where I'm coming from. I, I moved to Richmond. I'm not, I was raised in Fredericksburg originally, about an hour north from here. Uh, my father is a second generation uh, Jamaican. So my grandma immigrated from, from St. Anne's Bay in, in Jamaica back in the 60s. Uh, my mother is from Virginia, so she's from Spotsylvania County. Um, a little bit further north from here. And I grew up in Central Virginia, but moved to, uh, moved to, went to school in D.C. for a little bit. Went to uh, Howard. Um, didn't finish, but that's part of my story. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Uh, and I found my way back here to Richmond. To do what I'm doing here. Didn't study agriculture originally, didn't study it formally, um, which is another part of my story ultimately. An important part, if you ask me, that I don't have a formal education in doing this. But sometimes it's not about that. Sometimes it's just about hustling and knowing what your ancestors have for you and in store. This is uh, Old Westover, West I think that's what it's called, yeah, Old Westover. I just call it Southside, Southside. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? spaces that happily naturally manages mm -hmm. um we have been here since january 2021 oh, wow. uh, we got here oh, as mm -hmm. a result of our covid response COVID. so when covid mm -hmm. popped off uh we were doing delivery of and, and planted the first 20 fruit trees mm -hmm. on the side and lightning cow so this is just a byproduct of this is where the energy went you know what I mean? Those 20, first 20 fruit trees came. One of my homies, the artist, uh, called me, uh, Liberated Minds, and was like, yo, I've got a fundraiser for you. Did the fundraiser, sold some art, we bought 20 more fruit trees. And then right after that, another one of my comrades got a grant and said, yo, I got 40 trees. So it's just like 20 went to 40, and then 40 went to 80. Then we bought some more and it was 100. And then we bought some more and it was 120. So it's just been a multiplier effect.
everything that you see here, with the exception of these uh, large, you know, old growth trees, oh, we brought here. Oh, you know what I mean? We, we established the rooms, the rainwater catchment system, the shed, the pavilion, the solar, everything. I don't like to use the terms like blank slate when you talk about vacant lots, but this is just an empty space or a space that was just grass. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, we use this space for training, right? So all of our 12, if you've heard about our Central Virginia Urban Farm Fellowship, we do that program here. This is the home base for that. And then we also do our five week boot camps here. Um, we also uh, host dinners, here and yoga other community events Me. One, two, three. Yeah. 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 Just like that. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate y'all. We all family. We're gonna do our thing. Get in there. Get it going. I also like to add a little bit of brown sugar. Um, like I said, that soil's kind of bitter. And it some garlic. And I'm a messy chef. We're gonna add those. You only have to cut them, you have to bust them down and off. Alright? So now you have some grape tomatoes in there. You got your your aromatics going. Black folk food seasoning. And you can use a little bit, you can use a lot of it. Whatever you want to do. I like to use a lot. I want you to taste my flavors. I got a little salt pepper mix right here as well. We'll add our watermelon. And what that watermelon is going to do, all the sugar is going to come out. So it's going to start to caramelize um, this entire dish right here. And then we got our sorrel tea. We'll add a little bit of that. <coughs> and what you want to do is you want to cut your, cut your heat down and low and slow. You know what I mean? You want all of those flavors to break down, get real nice. You want that soil to reduce. You know what I mean? So you can leave the flavor and not just the water. You can add some more plates. So what can I do as a chef to bring what we do, you know what I mean, to the, the forefront? forefront. Yeah. So we can now have, you know, have those plates there. So like I said, we I, I embrace us. You know, I like to use the flavors that we do. Yeah. Um, I'm always cooking with watermelon. I'm always cooking with chicken. I have a fried chicken and watermelon salad that I do. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I embrace our culture and I give it to you in a fine way so you can look at it and be like, I'm proud of that. And that just takes us there. 